Former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi will be part of the president's defense team at the impeachment trial. Pam, good morning. Good morning. We'll ask you about those new documents, that new evidence in a moment. But first, take us inside the president's defense strategy, how you're preparing for Tuesday. What's happening behind the scenes right now? Well, I can tell you, that, you know, Pat Cipollone is, it's been a joy to work with him side by side. He's one of the brightest lawyers I, I've ever met. Um, Jay Sekulow. And this team has been ready to go. The White House counsel working with Jay. Um, we've been ready. We were ready last month. We're ready now. We'll be ready next week. Because, you know, impeaching a president is one of the most monumentous things you can do in our country. And the way this got started, our founding fathers um, have never, ever anticipated that this would happen the way it did. No one could. Yeah. That yeah. it would happen without a full vote of the House of Representatives. Pam the way it started in the House, and so on. Pam, we do want to ask you about this new evidence that sure. Kelly just reported on overnight. So now we have multiple pictures of President Trump with Lev Parnas, his family members with Lev Parnas, his top associates. You're even in one of the photos. It also includes an electronic calendar entry by Parnas obtained by the FBI of a breakfast meeting with President Trump just days before Parnas was arrested. So does the president still maintain that he does not know who Lev Parnas is? Well, I haven't spoken to the president this morning, but I can tell you as a former Florida attorney general in a state with almost 22 million people, we took pictures constantly, constantly with thousands of people. Um, and clearly, Love Parnas liked to take pictures with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, I remember him being at, at a Republican AG event. Um, he, was, he showed up at events pretty much everywhere where Republicans were, elected Republicans, prominent Republicans. And, you know, I don't know what that matters, what they're planning on doing with it. But, you know, we're going to stick to the facts and we're going to stick to the law in this case. And, you know, this is just something else the Democrats continue to do. They just drop things at the last minute. They keep dropping pictures. And what does this have to do? This is all about one phone call that President Trump had with President Zelensky. The transcript yeah. was released. And they have not charged. I've got to be really clear here. They have not charged the president with Pam, any crime. And Pam, not to be, one. And to be clear, they say it's more than just a single phone call. They say it's part of a larger pressure campaign. But let me ask you about some of the key figures on the president's defense team. Sure. Alan Dershowitz. Also, the individual we've been talking about a lot today is Ken Starr, who spearheaded the Clinton impeachment back in 1999. This is what Donald Trump said about Starr then. I think Ken Starr is a lunatic. I really think that Ken Starr is a disaster. Uh, I... So why would the president pick someone to be on his defense team that he thinks is a lunatic and a disaster? Well, clearly he does not now. And I've spoken to the president about Ken Starr at length. He thinks he's a brilliant attorney. Ken Starr knows what he's doing. He has experience in this field. Professor Dershowitz is, is a constitutional expert. And, you know, I think we've got a great team, a great mix of people. And again, led by Pat Cipollone, who knows this case inside and out, and Jay Sekulow, and the rest of our team. Yep. And we are ready to go. Pam, you know, in the House, Peter, go, yeah, go ahead, Kristen. Pam, because we do want to get all of this in, and we're running out of time here. Democrats, sure. as you know, are demanding that witnesses testify as a part yeah. of the Senate trial. The president says he did nothing wrong. So why is he blocking these witnesses from testifying? Why wouldn't he welcome that? Well, first, and I'm glad you asked that question. He, in the House, what, what happened in the House? I mean, it was, you know, as a career prosecutor, the president did not have the right to counsel. He did not have the right to present witnesses. He did not have the right. They're doing so why not have them testify now? Things. He could not cross-examine witnesses. They could have called these witnesses in the House had they chose meaning Schiff and Nadler. But the, they did not choose well, to To be clear, them. the White House blocked a lot of these individuals, including John Bolton, from testifying, right? No, no, no hold on. No, let me tell you, they both had... Look at Charlie Kupperman, okay? Charlie Kupperman received Bolton's a deputy. subpoena. And what did he say? Let's litigate this. I'm not saying I'm not going to testify. I'm not saying I am. Let's let the courts decide. That's our long-standing system of justice. Any lawyer knows that. Anyone knows that. So when he did that, what did they do? They withdrew the subpoena. I mean, the game playing has just been going on and on. Pam. And now that we're at the Senate, hold on, now that we're at the Senate, 
This is the time all these witnesses should have been heard in the House of Representatives. But let me keep going on that. If they want to call a witness, if they want to force a witness yeah. to be called, you know, that's going to be discussed. But you have a separation of powers. You, you think about this with executive power. If you want Pam. to try to call someone with national security issues yeah. at risk, that could jeopardize any future president. Pam, let, me, talk really fast Pam, let me ask you the broader question, though. Don't the American people deserve to know all of the facts? They did, and they did in the House of Representatives when they held secret hearings, and they were secret. They held secret hearings. Well, Republicans were in the room in the as well, obviously. Bunker, hold on. Some Republicans, they wouldn't let all members of Congress in. They weren't allowed to talk. Look at what happened in the House even. How could you call that fair when in the constitutional part? They yeah. got to call... This is, this is the president being accused, yet they called three that witnesses... And then only let the president call one. And now one of their witnesses is, has even come back and said the way and Nancy Pelosi was holding the articles of impeachment just wasn't fair. She called him a clear and present danger, yet refused to send them over to the Senate. So we've never seen anything like this in our history, and we just want to get this resolved in a fair way as soon as possible. Well, the country. process begins on Tuesday, and America will be watching. Pam Bondi, we thank you for joining us and for sharing your views. Thank you.